Good morning, everyone. How is everybody today on Tuesday, whatever the heck date it is? Um, don't mind my mess in the sink here. I am doing some deep cleaning because I always feel like when you want to declutter your life, um, you really need to clean up where you live and how you live. And it helps with other things outside of um, what you're having to deal with in this world. Um, I'm Kitra Marie. I reside in St. Louis, Missouri, where it is cold. It is 16 degrees this morning. Um, been up early, went and got my car, dropped it off to um, go get inspected because there's some big things on the horizon and I need my car to get me back and forth. Got an opportunity that was offered to me out of state and I'm going to take it. So in the meantime though, um, while I'm here in my kitchen um, where I like to do meal prep and cook and teach and talk. This morning I want to talk a little bit about some of the questions that I have been uh, recently asked. Don't mind the mess but this is real life. You can't be the pretty people all the time and when you are trying to be your most authentic self you just go with it. You just go with it. So this morning I got my little what I call Cindy Lou Who hair going on. It needs to be colored. Um, I need to take some of the brass out of the blonde to get it a little whiter. I um, need to touch up the roots because, you know, gray. Wisdom. That's the way I see it. Let me grab a cup of coffee and um, and I got the eye bot going so it's going to go like this. Uh, it's got a mind of its own, like me, but you know that. But here, um, as I've been trying to get some of my classes all up and going. I just want to kind of throw out there real quick, if you're in the St. Louis, Missouri area and you are needing some type of a fund raising um, for any of your projects that you are trying to raise money for, my painting classes, KM Designs, um, I can help you with that. If you can guarantee 20 people I can come up with a fair price where I am being paid for my service and then what we charge above that will go towards your fundraiser. Um, I bring all the supplies, you pick your theme, um, but again for a fundraiser you have to have 20 guests. Um, otherwise if you just want to have a painting party um, you have to have seven paying guests and you being the eighth, you're free. And you still get to pick your theme and I still bring all the supplies and um, we can go from there. Just send me a message, kitramaria at gmail.com or you can leave a message below. I'm drinking some hazelnut coffee this morning. Um, I'm still debating back and forth if I want to re-sign up with the gourmet cup board because I do like to cook and because I do like to have a food source. But if you know of another food entity or company um, that I can join either to do affiliate marketing or brand ambassador or even an MLM if it's worth it. Some of the MLMs you got to really be careful for. They are cults. Hold on one minute because we're going to do some talking here. I hope everybody is happy, healthy, being prosperous and living in positivity and not negativity. Sadly, I had a two-hour debate with um, a neighbor, and uh, her and I did not agree on on her side or my side, which was fine and dandy. But I've kind of have gotten it up to here. People that are very closed off to a bigger picture of what's going on out in this world. You know, I always have no ill feelings towards anybody. I am a very compassionate type person, but I'm to the point where I start to look at people and, and I'm questioning some of their stupidity. Doesn't make me a rocket scientist, doesn't make me the smartest woman on this planet, but because I am such an independent thinker and because I have studied anatomy and physiology not once in my life, but twice in my life. Um, in the years, in the beginning, especially when I was diagnosed with lymphatic leukemia, running back and forth to our cancer center, um, which I was made to believe that I was really, really sick. 
when in fact I was not really, really sick. I have an ongoing chronic illness that can be maintained with a healthy lifestyle and a good diet and exercise because when you live a healthy, clean life, you are given years into your life. And those three years that I was there, I studied on my own immunology to, so I could learn exactly how the lymphatic system works. So as I like to use a lot of the things that I have learned in my own personal life, um, I like to share the things that I learn. Again, I'm not the smartest woman on this planet. You know, do your own research. Look things up yourself. Do not take words at face value because you know a guy who knows a guy who went through something. We all go through things. Yeah, and people like to compare their sad stories. Um, oftentimes, a lot of things become what I call war stories. The thing, the one thing they hang on to forever, and they want to, they want to like beat it till it's a dead horse. Um, and that's all on you. It really is. Um, you just have to have an open mind and understand how your body works. I don't know if I want to stand here. I'm going to make pancakes. Like I said, I got up really early this morning, ran my car over, and the kid came and picked me up. I had to get him up, and um, it's cold. And I said, do you want me to make some pancakes? I had bought some really good strawberry jelly, and I don't like syrup on my pancakes. I like strawberry jelly on my pancakes. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll sit down a minute. Let me pour me some more coffee. Because I want to talk a little bit about the question that was just recently asked to me. You know, the cold weather, it kind of, it does, it takes something out of you here. So make sure if you're out and about, dress warm. You know, be weather appropriate. Don't be one of those people running around in, in shorts. I'm going to empty some of this out here. Fill this up. Ran out to my Ruby girl last night. Um, whoop! I bought over here. <laughs> Ran out to my Ruby girl last night and uh, worked with her. Oh, I don't know, a good hour and a half. We did some groundwork, and um, she was so happy to see me. She's gained so much weight. It's just amazing. She's I don't know somewhere between now twelve hundred and fourteen hundred pounds. She, her muscle definition is just absolutely beautiful. Okay, so you know I teach creative minded women or anybody who follows how to live this really exuberant life. That's what I like to call it. An exuberant life. I'm a little extra. I don't like normal. I don't like average. I don't like what everybody else is doing and I have pretty much decided I think I'm the only one that might be like me because the ones that I have come in contact with they seem to be followers and a follower I am not. Hold the thought. I think though I am I don't want to say an oddity but I give people reason to question the way they live and the way they think. And as a life coach, a business coach, it is my job to make you question everything that you have done in your life to have gotten you in the space or the spot or the lot in life that you are now. Again, hold on. So somebody recently asked me, how do you do what you do? How do you manage? How are you surviving? How did you get this lucky? Oh, sweetheart, it's not luck. It's hard work. It's hard work. Because, one, once you determine the life that you want to have, there is nothing or nobody that is going to stand in your way to keep you from having the life that you want. I often, you know, say I live a very charmed life. I live a very blessed life. Opportunity always shows up when I need it to. I pray a lot. I talk out loud always. I say I have spirit guides. Um, my personal spirit guide, his name is Joe Schmo because he's nothing fancy. 
other than he's been assigned to me because really I'm nothing fancy. I just live a life that I have talked about and I walk my talk. And I teach this in my classes. Um, sometimes I like to say, you know, I'm freaking magic. I can bend reality. And those are things that most people do not understand because they only choose to see me from how they used to know me. Or what they thought they knew me to be, they underestimated the power and the skill and the intelligence that I have from the years that I studied here and there and here and there. So you're asking, okay, you said you took anatomy and physiology, why? Well, you know, my dad, God rest his character soul, wanted me to be a nurse. I didn't want to be a nurse. I don't like the sight of blood. But to appease my dad, like most young girls do, I went to medical assisting school. Um, aced it, really. Got through all the classes, a year and a half of studying. By the time I got my little certificate, um, it was equivalent to an LPN. Could have went on, could have went and got that LPN degree, but I chose not to because that was not what I wanted to do. Um, when I got out of medical assisting school, um, I went and worked for a dentist office, and I did front office there. Now, mind you, I was young. This was right after I was out of high school, so we're talking. I graduated 79, 1979, so this was 80, 81, 82. Um, worked for a dentist, went and worked for our city hospital, worked in their billing department when it was just still pegboard billing um, and some basic typing because I was never a great typer till later in life when you kind of needed to really, really type on the computer. You didn't have a choice. So from there, um, I wanted to do and be with my friends. I was always a very social girl. I had groups of friends everywhere. I never really belonged into one group, but I had plenty of friends. And in my high school, we we had like, I want to say, 6,000 in our graduating class, and we graduated at Keele Auditorium downtown. But let's kind of like fast forward just a little bit. So I got married in... I have to stop and think about this, 83, 1983. My oldest came along in 85. I was a stay-at-home mom for years. I felt it was more important to be a hands-on mom, be in my home, mostly because my mom had passed away at the age of 31. In 1968, she lost her life. And growing up motherless, and anybody out there who has not had a mom, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's so many uncertain questions that nobody ever answers or nobody wants to talk about because it's too painful or it's a secret or it's something that's been swept under the rug that nobody wants to talk about. So by the time I had Jason and Rachel, I thought I I just want to I just want to be a mom. I want to experience what my mom did not get to experience. And I did that for years, for years. Um, my dad passed away in 1992, and by 1994 I was divorced. I was married then 11 years, had the two children. Um, knew I needed to do something after my divorce. And after losing my dad, I always say that was a very dark time in my life because I was such a daddy's girl. and. And although Dad handed things to us very left-handed without some big lesson that came behind it or a guilt trip behind money, um, I kind of feel like I lost my mind. I went to this place that grief holds you in. And because I was so unhappy in my marriage that I didn't know what I was going to do or how I was going to do or how I was even going to function in life. I was 30 two years old and here I've got these small kids and I'm a single mom after being married 11 years and being a stay-at-home mom and where all of my friends had went to school um, they all pretty much all still hung in the same neighborhood and it just so happened they were all started going to this one particular place 
And I thought, you know what? I can either force feed you or talk you to death. And I think I'm just going to go wait tables. And I made really, really good money back in those days. I was making $900 a week, four days a week. And took my kids on vacations. Um, they wanted for nothing. They went to a private school. And I was, I was having the best of both worlds. I've never been a big drinker, never. My dad was a functioning alcoholic beyond a functioning alcoholic. Um, and I, I didn't want to take that path but I certainly learned how to make it work in my life where I could make money from it. So let's fast forward to 2005. I had sold the house that I was living in. In fact, it was the house I grew up in that I inherited back, sold it, made some money off of it, and purchased this home. And I think I've now been in this home, I want to say going on 17 years. 17 years, way too long. I was only supposed to be here five years. And at that time, I went to go work for a banquet facility that was run by our previous mayor's father. So 2006, 7, 8, 9. Then the world turned upside down. In the years that I was at the banquet hall, I was their operations manager. I hobnobbed with the best of people, made a, a good living, um, ran the show, had a staff of 40 underneath me. Now, at that particular time, nobody knew that the world was going to turn upside down. Nobody knew that the economy was going to crash. Nobody knew that there were going to be a lot of things taken away from us, just the rug pulled right underneath our feet. And when you have a really good job like that, it's really hard to go back and start again. And I could not see myself at that time having this high prestigious job going to work at a gas station to be a counter clerk. Not that there is anything wrong with that. But I felt like I couldn't go backwards. I needed to either take one small step back and then leap into the next avenue. So here 2009 comes, the economy crashes, and everybody is starting to lose everything. And I, honestly, the relationship I was in, I was blamed for everything while I was trying to keep our family, his kids, my kids, all together, it wasn't enough for him because he was used to a dynamic where the woman had always brought the check in and he could run his business and run his life amok any way that he chose. And as I was trying to keep us all together, it was just a real struggle. So his insecurities and his frailties, he turned around and projected onto me. Now, if, you, if anybody knows what it's like to be gaslighted, anybody who knows what it's like to really be in love and love somebody and you're doing everything that you possibly can and it's never good enough, it's, it's, never, it's never right. And I think oftentimes it comes from really where the other person is and how they can't get their life right. They can't find the magic path to get them where they need to be. So it's easy to turn it around and blame somebody else. So at that particular time, my daughter had had her first baby, my grandson. And I was home. I was collecting unemployment. It's not like I was just willy-nilly, like doing nothing. I was taking care of my grandson for a good part of the time. You know, there's no greater joy than taking care of your grandchild, taking care of your baby's baby. It is a joy beyond that you compare. And I've got four grandkids now and they are just absolutely fabulous and they just think I'm the best next thing to peanut butter and jelly. And in that time, I wasn't real sure though work-wise what I was going to do. You know, people were losing houses you know, my car had gotten repossessed, and I will say just this last year from the car loan, they sent me a letter 
retracting everything that they did in a very long legal. It wasn't quite a battle, but let's just say that I was very validated for the things that I had originally said because I had made my payments. I made my payments every every month and they held the payments and rolled it over to the next month where it made it look like I wasn't making a car payment, which I was. So by 2010, you know, 2010 comes along and I'm just like, the relationship had really just gone to crap. Um, whatever I was doing was not enough. Needed to take care of my house. I needed to maintain the vehicle that I did get back. And by the, by the grace of, of a moment of kindness, I was given my car back, but it was held over my head. For I can't tell you how many years it was held over my head. And there's no greater deed self-satisfying if a human being can hold a good deed over your head and say, but I did this for you without understanding or coming to terms with all the things that I had done for him and all of them. So 2010, I took a job um, bartending. People I knew worked, made okay money. It was mostly a lot of aggravation and a lot of heartache and a lot of harassment. I can't tell you the amount of times I was harassed in that particular job. And then, you know, I had gotten sick and um, needed to maintain my health. Ran three years back and forth to our cancer center. And, you know, just grabbing my bootstraps, pulling up. I had lost, was starting to lose weight. I was getting very thin and very frail. My mind was just fragile. And I started studying. I started studying. You can study anything in this life. You can study anything on the internet. You don't need to necessarily put yourself back in a class. There's a whole plethora of information out on the internet that you can learn. And 2015, 16, 17, while I was in this dead-end job that was absolutely going nowhere, where I was barely making enough money to function, I had learned how to be a life and a business coach. Not that I wanted to be a doctor, but I wanted to be able to use it with my classes. I wanted to be able to share my experiences over the last 10 years because 10 years flies by. 10 years if you've wasted it blaming other people for your frailties. What a very unhealthy, insecure human being. And I didn't want to be that. I'm responsible for me. I'm responsible for my house. I'm responsible and I do the grown-up things that I know how to do within the power that I know how to do them. You know, although I worked in a bar and, and I served drinks, I wasn't a drinker. I wasn't wasting my money that I was earning because it was hard-earned money. And I was able to stay at that job for eight years. Eight years I stayed there. I put up with all kinds of crap that I didn't need to. And then I took a year off. And then I found another job. And by the time I had found another job, I had already been establishing in my life coaching and my teaching. So don't dismiss little opportunities that people better themselves on. You know, when you don't waste your time, because you can't get time back. You can always earn money, but you don't get your time back. So recently, you know, someone just said, how, how do you do this? How do you do what you do? One, because of heartache, I overcame. And I proved to a lot of different people where I didn't even need to be justified or, or validated for my moves because I was intelligent enough to know the direction that I wanted to go. So as a brand ambassador, as an affiliate marketer, you find the product that you love and you talk about it. You, you, you create this environment around it and you sell it. And to whom you are working with, usually the brand pays you. A small commission, unless you're being sponsored 
and then they pay you not only for the sponsor, but they pay you for the merchandise. You know, as a life coach, I use it in my law of assumption, my law of attraction, my, my business coaching. Nobody can tell you what you can't do. If you already see it in your mind and you've got the clear open space to bring these things into your world. My painting classes. I have taught up to 50 people in one of my painting classes. My painting classes are so successful and it's so fun. You don't really know what you're missing until you take the class. Where a lot of my bread and butter has been through my teaching and all of my kit-isms have been shared with the things that I like to let people in on the lessons of this life and, and what really is out there. If a person chooses to waste their life on a bar stool and blame somebody else because they couldn't meet a school payment or a house payment, that's their lack of character and ability to do the things that they needed to do for their own family. And although it was held over my head all those years, I can do this for you. I can get you a job here. I never once saw that other person take that same opportunity. It was too easy to blame me for the things that weren't happening in his life. So here we are, 2022. We have gone through the last two years of hell. People who have lost their way, people who have lost jobs, people who have suffered health, in some strange way, it's it's a replay of 2008 and 2009. You know, we don't know a direction in which we are going. And although I am very thankful and I am very blessed in the last four years, I have been, been made able to survive. And for that, I will always be grateful. But I, I know in my mind where I want to go. And I don't want any entity or anything to hold me back. And now that I have this other opportunity that is coming along, I don't know where that will take me. It's all I know is I am leaving the space and I am creating a bigger volume for more business to come into my world. So for the person that asked me, how are you surviving? What are you doing? How are you making your money? This is how. This is how I've done it since 2013. You know, it's ebb and flow. It's some nights you don't sleep at all. Some mornings you get up and you're like, I just can't do this one more day. But there's always been that little guide in the back of my head, my Joe Schmo saying, you've gotten this far. You're not going to stop now. So as I get ready to venture out on my next big opportunity, um, I will keep you as all in tune with what's going on. I don't like to talk a whole lot about my private life um, because I don't need that validation. I don't need that recognition or somebody to say, "At a girl, you did it. I don't need that. I'm secure and confident enough with who I am and what I do, how I do it, and why I do it. So I am Kitrin Marie. I reside in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm an artist, a writer, a speaker, a life, and a business coach. I teach creative-minded human beings how to have this exuberant life and if you were interested I would love to have you in any of my classes so for today for tomorrow take care um, be happy be blessed be thankful for everything that comes into your life remember fate does turn on a dime and really only you get to decide what side of that coin you want to be on so I'm going to go make my pancakes now feed my kid and go pick up my car so take care and I'll see you all soon bye